Uh, Eldridge fan said you might uh, polish up a novella and get me to edit it. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of editing lately. Um, you know, I have the the time this summer, so I've had um, four or so editing gigs thus far. Um, Electric Barbarella, um, Studio Super here, Junk. Uh, I need to to get his manuscript back to him. So yeah, I've been um, that's been fun. I, I really like to edit manuscripts. I really do. It's um. <clears throat> That's just something that, you know, it's just what I've been specifically trained. I mean, you know, my education is to teach, but, you know, I, I also the MFA in creative writing and, and it's, um, you know, I, I studied how to write good, succinct prose, how to craft a good story, tension and pacing and everything. So that's, you know, that's what I've been uh, trained for. And it's really, it's really fun to, you know, stop just trying to get students to care about writing some sort of analytical essay and actually, you know, work on somebody's fiction manuscript, uh, whether it's a comic manuscript or a, or a story or a script for a movie or whatever, you know, it's always fun. So yeah, uh, be happy to help anybody with their, uh, with their manuscripts or whatever. Again, I do have the time this summer. I'll drop my email in the chat one more time and I uh, usually get a bite here or there. Um, and again, my rates are crazy low, but it's just because I find that that helps a lot of writer, writers. Plus, you know, unless I really wanted to push doing this professionally and, and doing it for like publishing houses or whatever, you know, everybody tells you as an editor, don't undercharge, you know, your time is worth, you know, more than this in your, in your education. And it's all true. It's certainly all true. But the simple fact of the matter is, writers don't have that kind of money just to, you know, spend all these thousands of dollars on editing or whatever, you know? So I spent, I, I charge $2 a word. I mean, sorry, two cents a word, which is crazy low. Uh, three cents a word is even low. And that's about the lowest I've heard a lot of people doing it, but I do it especially because people who, who patron my editing service find me here on, um, on my channel, you know, so that's a way for me to give back to my subscribers and, you know, or channel viewers and, uh, yeah. So anyway, put the email in the chat there. If, uh, if you'd like me to, to, if you'd like to talk to me about some, some editing, you can drop me a line. Studio super, another four, uh, four nine nine super chat. Thank you so much. Said also, or, or as a customer to profs editing services, go for it. Great service. Yeah. Thank you. Studio super. Yeah. I just worked on a story treatment that, uh, he had for a comic and it's really good stuff, really cool stuff. So, uh, you know, I do developmental editing. That's the level of the editing that, that, you know, I offer, but I can't not comment on the pros, you know, so you do get a little copy editing thrown in there too, to, to, you know, because, you know, ideally those should be different levels. Um, you know, if you, if you, if you really get your story developed well and you got the content well, then you'll want to go back and really get somebody to copy edit it and, and help you really get that pros tight, you know, and then ultimately you'll get a proofreader after that. Uh, but I think that copy edit our prose styling and, uh, and the story content, it, it, it's, it's linked. It's too linked to not, um, to not address both to a certain level. So, uh, yeah. Oh, this is cool. Junk said, uh, he made a great horror story a while back about a man obsessed with a cryonically frozen woman. Yeah. I've, I've read a couple of my stories, um, on the stream. That's one of my favorite stories that I wrote, uh, the, it's called a girl, it's called girlfriend in the basement. And it's, um, I am working on compiling my short stories into a compilation that I can, um, probably just, you know, I'd like to shop it around two small publishers. And I know that, you know, all well, that's not, you know, the real money is, is, is in just doing it yourself and this and that I get it, but I'm just not the, the businessman. I just don't have that, that level of skills or, or time or energy. And, um, small publishing houses have served me well in the past. So I'll probably do that. But yeah, girlfriend in the basement was a, um, thank you for that junk. I appreciate it. Girlfriend in the basement is a really great little tale about a guy who, uh, gets back from his honeymoon with his wife to find out that his ex-girlfriend has had herself cryonically frozen and left herself to him in her living will. And she's only to be derived. Her, her advanced directive is that she can only be revived if he agrees to divorce his wife and marry her. <laughs> so there's more to it, you know, that it kind of makes it a little more believable, you know, <clears throat> but it's a fun story. I like it. I really like to write tales. That's my, that's my number one favorite thing to write. Now I am trying to work on a novel and, you know, it's good for any writer to be able to stretch themselves into other, uh, you know, medias and genres and whatnot. But uh, for me, the, I've really, you know, it's one of the things I worked on when I was studying for my MFA degree and, and really, you know, I was at a great program where I was able to work with a lot of published authors and, and really do a lot of studying on how to do this. But 
really crafting the tale. And this came from my love for Edgar Allan Poe growing up, uh, the Twilight Zone, you know, that kind of stuff. In a tale, I say nowadays, you know, Edgar Allan Poe said that uh, any good piece of fiction should be short enough so that a reader can finish it in one sitting. Because he he wanted, you know, to the readers to experience something that he called the unity of effect, meaning that, you know, you uh, every in a good short story, every word, every part of the language, every word choice, every, you know, um, length of a paragraph and everything, the characters, it should it should affect a, a certain emotion in the reader, you know, one certain effect. And he said that, you know, if it's broken off, you know, it, it breaks that effect. In, in the, um, I think he's onto something with that. I think there is something truly special about a piece of fiction you can sit down and read in one sitting. Doesn't mean that there's, you know, not something to be said for a novel where you can kind of live with that piece of fiction for, you know, a month or so or longer if it takes you that much longer to read it. You know, it's kind of fun too. But there is something about that, just that powerful punch of a short piece of fiction. And in Poe's day, people actually had longer attention spans and you could, you know, read longer stories today. Trying to get somebody to read something in one sitting, uh, so my so my tales, the the short stories are no longer than ten pages, um, if that, if that, and that's really, uh, it's not about leaving things out. It's not about. Uh, in fact, it's even harder. It's it's even it's even a real precise art to boil something down into just a real. You know, Stephen King said um, about short stories. He was talking about novels, and he said, but a short story is something different. A short story is like a kiss in the dark from a stranger, and I love that definition of it especially in a good, you know, succinct tale, you know, like episodes, I used to love those anthology series growing up with like monsters or tales from the dark side and stuff. And if it, if it's done well, you know, you spend this little amount of time on a story and it just gut punches you or it just gives you these effect and you walk away like, what just happened to me? What was that? <laughs> you know, and it's really cool. That's why I, I love stories like that. So uh, glad you remembered that junk that I read that. Appreciate it.